And we're back for game number two in this best of three series between Newbie and Cloud9 for the World Cyber Arena 2014. A prize pool of nearly $500,000 up for grabs here. We're in the semifinals of the winner's bracket. Beyond the Summit's bringing you the coverage. I'm Cottle Guy, but joining me is Mr. Senior Fogg from Navi US. How you doing, my friend? Welcome Ten back. Ten seconds remaining. Ready for the World Cyber Cup. World Cup Five of Cybers, I like to say sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I can't get the name, apparently. But a lot of WC, WEP, WCAs. These guys really need to branch out with some of their names, let's be honest. All right, Fog, between me and you? Lots well, of Ws. Lots of Worlds. Yeah, lots of Worlds, lots of Cups, a Cyber here and there. Whatever. But we're back, though. TP this Ben, Visage Ben, nice Razor pickup for Cloud9. Mm -hmm. Panda's still left in the pool. Wouldn't be too surprised if we see Newbie pick it up in their first two. Uh-huh, uh-huh, all right. Go keep going. Good no. stuff. <laughs> I mean, that's ah. the panda. Oh, you're, all, you're so on fire already. Newbies, but the second hero, I mean, there's Centaur, but a lot of these teams aren't even prioritizing Centaur in this type of draft. No. So no. I think they could potentially. No, si we're not also seeing a lot of Tidehunter very often anymore. I don't know why. A lot of yeah. teams, they're not favoring the, uh, the the big Ravage. One that can really. Newbie took. Uh, they did what? Bat Rider first pick last game? So maybe they'll do a Brew and a Bat. I don't know if that's so nice. They'll probably go end up going for one of their supports Ten here on their second pick. Remaining. I want to say uh, Batrider's been like number in the top three as far Five as pick ban remaining. in this patch. It's like same with some of the adjustments that have been made on more priority heroes. It's Reserve brought Bat time. right back up into it. He did receive a, a very tiny, tiny nerf in this recent 6.82 patch, that being an additional, what, like 10 seconds on his cooldown, I believe. But uh, regardless, you know, he's still very, very useful hero. We've seen it utilized a lot, especially from Newbie, in the hands of Rabbit. Last time it was Moo, but they did fall short. It was Cloud9 coming out on top with their L Classic, the uh, This Is Drow lineup. Not going to see that this time. Immediate two respect bands. No Terra Blade. Like you said, but there it hey, is. They do Centaur. Go for the Centaur. Dang, Fog. Take it easy, all right? Man. Take it I got easy. both. Damn. Man, last game. Well, that was actually really surprising to see that. I mean, I guess this game they're just considering it so much because it's it's really damn good versus Razor. Of course, the static link, you pop the stampede. Mm -hmm. Anybody who's really static linked is able to get the hell out of there. Yeah, of course. So it works. Great global presence as well. And take a look at it. Lots of on kicking. Yeah. Heavy burst works nice as well. A severe amount of melee, so Cloud9 could take advantage of that. Ten Faceless Void's remaining. still in the pool. I don't know if that's something they might consider. I'm just trying to go through some of the more uh, top-notch kind remaining. of pickups that we see from time to time. Uh, but, yeah, you, Cloud9, they love their pushing Reserve tactile time. kind of strats right here, but a return of the Fata Razor, as he did find some significant lane advantage there in the mid, and we'll see them move it. And there's your Bat Rider, yeah. So this is starting to Cloud become the norm for 6.82 uh, from what I've seen thus far, these like first kind of couple of grabs and bands, so... Well, Cloud yeah, Knight gets that making benefit. a comeback. Yeah, I like it. Bone Seven is known what for his bat, man. Anyway? I, I, th I said it was like ten. It's either ten, like ten seconds, ten or a few more mana. Remaining. God, you're gonna make me all tab right now. I try to find it now. It's like bat rider. I know they added. No, I know they added ten seconds to the uh, ultimate, uh, or yeah. five seconds to the second ultimate, and ten seconds to the last one. If I'm, if I'm yeah. right. Reserve time. But I guess just the way that late game the net worth changed. Still, I guess bat rider getting those pickoffs and stuff, and he's just a better off laner. I guess. I, don't know. I mean, he... he's just getting a lot more popularity. It seems like this tournament is really bringing him out. Majority of these teams are prioritizing very highly. They're liking to go greedy with like uh, the, you know, with your terror blades and and your kind of hero pickups that love to utilize heavy farm and can deal heavy burst. I mean, I guess Bat Rider's one of the best as far as locking down a single target. Bad. and You can just focus fire that kind of the victim, I guess you could say. So yeah, like last patch, you'd see it would be kind of similar, let's say, but then it would be like a razor and a void mm -hmm. instead of that Bat Rider, probably. Because I feel like last patch was more about the team fight, but it's not looking like, I mean, without the Tidehunter, remaining. without Void being played quite as much, and uh, people nine, going more, like, severe rice, I mean, Eternal Envy, is like, he's like one of those, like, ultra, ultra carries, and he doesn't really care about it, so he just wants to be able to get that farm and be able to bring it through for his team as the Dark Horse, and something they fall back on. They're already recognizing that they get rid of the Naga as well. Ten I mean, other... Heroes that typically fit this kind of profile usually were like what? Your, your morphlings, remaining. I guess you could say. You're maybe a weaver from here and there. Some teams even consider like anti mage, but we'll see what's uh, what's up their sleeve here for Cloud9 as far as what they want to do in late bad. game. And uh, without Owie picking up his visage, he can fall back on one of his other usual support grabs. I would love to see his Chen. He doesn't play it anymore, though. Chen received a bit of a buff, but teams just don't care. They don't care about the Chen, Fogged. 
Why? Yeah, he's very he's very Ten specific. I think he can still work in a lot of lineups, but I don't know. He's just he just falls off so hard. And like a lot of these games are getting so far into the late game, everybody's just farming everything. So if you're Chen's like running around trying to find neutrals time. later on, I feel like it's gonna be pretty worthless. Maybe those ancients. That's where you get the eggs, and you take some dragons that are do nothing. Oh, I like that, I, but we haven't seen it. It's just not you. They just don't do anything. They don't want. Yeah. It's just, you, by the time you get it, and maybe if you try somehow in some funky way to put Chen in some sort of farming position, you can try to get it done. I only say maybe Aoi if they because... had the the evasion ones. Maybe if they added those in, and then then it would be legit because those things are obnoxious. Ugh. From Dota one, those things were just intolerable. I don't know. I don't think that's. It's going to be on the docket here. I was one of the few who could take a support and actually find that kind of farm on it. As we saw, usually with his, turn to pick. with his visage. But eh, there's your AA Fair. grab. And uh, Cloud nine, you know, this is going to nerf a lot of their heavy healing ability. You know, typically your Razor grabbing up something like a mech, that's going to be a bit iffy now. The, and we saw... Yeah, what was AA is like the, I think that's, AA is like one of the great counters to Fada. It just counters mechs, so... Yeah. So no no sustain here, not with this guy on the field. We saw, what was it, last night going against the Wisp Tony. He was, like, one of the sole reasons they couldn't get anything done. So in the hands yeah, of Newbie, last... they could do some serious work with it. He he can shoot the long ball and definitely find Ten his target. Ten seconds so. remaining. Yeah. Newbie are very familiar on the Radiant side, Ancient Apparition Five kind of a lineup there. Remaining. Now I'm trying to remember. Do you remember what was their support duo for that game? They had the Ancient Apparition, but what was their support? Reserve time. One? It's rattling my brain right now. Eh. Which one are you saying again? For newbie, last night when they went uh, against Navi, and they did have the ancient apparition going against Navi's like gyrocopter Havos kind of a lineup. I can't remember what the secondary support was that really brought it home for him. Sand King? Was it? Was it Sand King? Maybe. Sand King could work here. Sand King can work definitely. Jumping up center, bringing it down right now. Uh, they also had a Spectre that I, game. I remember. I don't know. Last night I was busy uh, with other problems, so that it probably slipped my mind just based on that. But looking at dealing with your problems, you were helping me deal with my problems there. You were in chat harassing people. That's what I saw. Anyways, Cloud Nine yeah, they was. grab up uh, <laughs> they grab up the uh, Wraith King, who uh, I, that actually might have been the hero. Now that I think about it, Wraith King a support though is going to be on the hands of uh, Cloud Nine. Was it Rubik? Oh, it was Rubik. It was Rubik. It was Rubik. There we go. It was Rubik. Chat, That's it. Chat, Jesse chat saying it. Chat now. knows these games yeah. better than I do, and I'm a caster fog. That's oh, well. right, they had the Rubik AA. Oh, yeah, that's right, okay. Then they were moving around all over the place. That's right, the du good dual support. I don't know and how, they ended up how well... Uh, instead of AA. That's right. uh, and, they had a, and, of course, they had the Spectre to round the whole thing out. Spectre's still available Ten seconds and is the remaining. Rubik. But I don't know how Rubik is going to be in this kind of lineup. I mean, Wraithfire Blast would be nice. Five seconds it's cute remaining. to get a hold of a Firefly, I suppose. But no, it's going to be Vengeful Spirit. We talked about a bit last game Cloud in the last nine. draft. As a hero has been picked up pretty significantly in this recent 6.82. You know, got your reasonable yeah. lockdown, He's fantastic aura. He's a good dual roam with AA as well, and he works. He fits this lineup very well, of course, versus the Bat Rider, which actually makes it pretty shocking that Cloud9 opts to ban out a Weaver and Ember. Mm -hmm. They figure they're not going to have too much lockdown for these, you know, very, you know, sneaky type car carries, and with Bat Rider just trying to last, so those guys can get away Ten quite easily. Mm -hmm. remaining. But this leaving this Venge is kind of odd because Venge just is Five extremely good versus Bat Rider, of course. The slight buff to that Venge uh, ult now at level one makes it so you can get those swaps Reserve off a bit time. easier. Oh yeah. Because that was the thing I always ragged on Eventual Spirit in the last patch. Whenever people would try to utilize it, it's just at level one, it's just it was so dinky. You really had to be like in the middle of the fray to try to get an optimal swap off. So then you're trying to be a little more greedy with your Eventual Spirit, but most teams don't like to do that. They like to move around. They like to hop and bop all over the place and try to get some kills on the map with these roaming kind of lockdown supports. And now things get a little bit easier Clinks. for her, but we'll see. Ooh, the Clinks, the EE e. Clinks, the Blinks, maybe I like potentially, this but. Hero. A ton right now, and a lot of no one, not really too many teams are picking it. I see, I saw Empire picking it, and I think maybe one other team. But Cloud9 is one of the big teams. Envy loves this click. Oh, yeah. He's the one actually who did, I think, the Blink Soul Ring. Ten seconds. Not sure if he invented it, but he is a big fan of that Cloud type of build. <clears throat> and I, I really like Clinks right now in this uh, <clears throat> in this meta because he's able to just he does so much because he's just able to find farm all over the place. And now since you can end up going for like a Desolator if you really oh, want yeah. to, That's you're able to see buildings. Pretty damn fast. We'll, we'll see if it's going to be this like remaining. new era of Clinks built here on uh, EE. He's, he's an innovator in his own right. Pretty much Cloud9 Newbies were known as being innovators. And it would either work or not work. An example of working was when he played primary the Clinks, and he did it at MLG Columbus, and it helped significantly with their team. 
An example of it not yeah, working. The blinks and everything. They tried a what it was a support spirit breaker at WPC that one time. Oh god, that was rough too. So they 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 love to innovate. They love to try new things here. They round out their draft with a silencer, and it is going to be a morphling grab on the side of newbie. So in the hands of Howe here, you know, done with the bristleback, and now bringing on the true farming potential. That is the morphling. So we'll see here. So I, newbie got I guess that's the combo lineup. there. They get the lasso off, and they just global, and then Venge is like, oh god. I'm clicking my swap, but it's just silence, silence. And they'll know it's coming too. We got something like a stampede coming your way. Pilot Dice is going to be ready with the uh, the R trigger finger, trying to prevent any sort of heavy harassment and also preventing Morphling from slipping away. Like you do. Banana's quick though. He's he's very quick on his fingers. So we'll see which which one is able to succeed. Solid drafts from both teams. Cloud Nine pulling the old standard with the clinks right here, and newbie going a little more traditional with the banking on a tremendously farmed. How Morphling. We'll see how it goes here as we hop in. This is game number two of a best of three series here in the semifinals. And uh, winner's going to go on to move that much closer to $500,000 prize pool. Nearly $500,000 prize pool. I'll lead things off on your radiant side. we got your Cloud9 boys. It's Bone7 playing one of his old signature tried and true heroes, your Bat Rider, going up to this off lane around the mid lane. we got Fata playing your Razor once again. Over nearby, we got Pylai Die. Dies very often, but even if it's going to be for the greater good of his team, he's happy to do so. Now he's going to be playing your silencer. Along the bottom, we got Mr. Eternal Envy playing the Clinks, and of course, that's going to leave Owie on playing the Wraith King. I don't see him play this hero very often. I'm, I'm very intrigued by this one. And to battle. Fog, please, if you will, newbie here as they place a very early Sentry Ward. Why don't you, why don't you, who, who's playing on newbie? Why don't you tell me? We got uh, Hao playing the Water Guy. Water he's got a nice little crown. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Looks like a. Uh, C9 pinging out some wards. They know that their jungle is going to be warded out, and they know that the river is going to be warded out. So how playing this water guy morphling with his nice crown? We got Rabbit playing Centaur down the bottom lane, going boots first. We have Banana. Oh, whoops. We have Sanchez <laughs> controlling the Ice Guy, Ancient Apparition. We have Moo playing the Panda first in mid with boots. So up first that Razor, and we do have Banana controlling the Venge, and they do end up finding a nice Illusion rune top lane, and Rabbit gets a Bounty rune bottom. So they get both runes at the start. Ooh, that's a fantastic. And Aoi knows the wards are happening here. He quickly denies the extra obs vision there on top of the hill, and he'll strut himself right back down to the bottom lane where he's going to be, I would imagine, more babysitting here for Eternal Envy at the start, but we could look at him roaming around a bit. But Silence is not one of those kind of heroes who likes to roam and get a law done early. It's last time we saw Silence in the hands of Havos trying to go farm, I didn't catch the end of that game, but... It, didn't really work out too well. It ended well very abruptly. We'll yeah. just say that. So I don't know. We'll see how it works in their favor as far as silence goes. And already EE just like bullying back the centaur. But centaur, of course, he opts instead of the stout shield. He goes with the boots first, so he can get away from any sort of potential danger. Only one lockdown this on the opposing side. Centaur's going to get a lot yeah. right now. Oh, he got his range creep in front bottom lane, so he, this lane's going to push up heavily toward him, and he's going to get like a level two and a half basically from these creeps. Yeah, they'll clear this on through, they'll go right under the tower, so he'll just kind of test his wits on getting as much CS as possible from under the tower, but regardless, we'll benefit from some serious XP early on. Bone7 on the other side of things, though, he's also getting heavily zoned back. No CS to his name thus far as even the Illusions and both San Shang really not allowing him to get close to this at all, and already you have your banana pulling out the side camp right here. And look at this, they're going right under the tower. They don't even want him to have those easy creeps. They bully him all the way back, but he's got the benefit of this new side path right here to still creep around here and get attack. close enough to get that XP. So, Rabbit. Ooh, 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 ooh. You're on the wrong side there, buddy. Now he's going to put him back into the trees, but here goes. Pylai dies like, I'm to the rescue. Don't worry, zones him back with that. And, uh, no, he can't get quite close enough. Bit iffy there at the start, but still, Cloud9 not making anything easy there for the Centaur. And same goes for Top The Orb Walk is real. The Orb Walk is very much real. Not harassing the tower at all, so they're both able to just freely get some nice hits on him. Envy took a little bit of damage, but he's got uh, not eight tangos on him and a soul ring recipe. Mm -hmm. So he's gonna go right eight, for that C9 range, this uh, time, uh, able to get both runes though. So first newbie gets both, now C9 gets both. It's a big deal, getting a hold of that sweet extra of a golden bounty, and uh, you know, here we go, taking advantage of that invis rune. Bone Seven scouts up, sees Sanjing nearby, knows he can't really do anything about it, but would love to leech as much XP as yeah. possible. It's going to be a relative quiet game, I would imagine here, as Razor and Brew go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. It's Razor, well in the head. Fada, really taking it to Brew in the start here. 15 and 5 CS to Moo's little 8 and 0, so off to a strong start. And oh, look at this, Bone Seven knows that Banana's lingering about. They would love to help out their Brew mate here in the mid lane, but Bone Seven's not going to allow it. In fact, if they could bait something happening here, maybe they can turn it back, but that's not going to be the case, so... 
Fanta knows this is coming, pulls back, and gets to play it a little bit extra safe. Yeah, and they're gonna smoke up with the centaur, and they're gonna go try to kill mid because they need to try. They need to help this panda out for sure. Mm -hmm. Fanta lays a little bit extra harassment, but he's pretty confident here. He's right oh, below the staircase here, and this allows them to potentially come in from behind. Still lingering nearby though is Owie, so even if they do make he's gonna it break go, this ball. yeah, he sees him. He sees him. Oh, he got clapped though. Got clapped. Try nice to link. There's a slow drunken haze slam. They want to burst him down. They're having to work for this one, but body block, body block, and they got it done. Bone 7 flies on forward, but it's pretty much a flight of, please, why'd you do that to my friend? And has to pull on back, so it's Newbie to strike first here in this game. As Last game it was more Cloud9 coming out and ahead, but Newbie want to take this game back as it's match point here for Cloud9. If they win this game, Newbie gets forced down to the bottom loser's bracket. Yeah, a little bit of, I guess, a cocky play there from Fada stepping up down across the midpoint of the river, trying to put the aggression on Mu while the support was missing. He did end up. He did see the Venge initially there too, so it was a bit strange to see him playing so cocky. Mm -hmm. But it was nice of the Venge and the Centaur both to be level two there. So with the Terror and with the Double Edge, they were able to pick up that kill quite easily. All right, so now it's Newbie to take both runes. Fogged. So back and forth we go here. Not looking to split runes for either teams as they try to maintain proper control from the top to the bottom of the river, but. You know, Centaur did commit a lot to go to that mid lane and get a part of that kill, and this allowed even more time for EE to get that farm. He's 24 and 4 right now, right up there with the top three as far as Fata on the Razor, as well as you know, Morphling. Mu in this top lane, also getting work done early on. He's got a early makings of his Aquila on hand, and I'd imagine he's just going to go for the old cookie cutter standard of getting a hold of a Lincolns as soon as possible thereafter. Yeah, more than likely. That would help out quite a bit, I would imagine, from anything coming their way. Lincoln's up the Ray Fire Blast. Of course, the Lasso is probably the biggest one that he would love to deter, and that's going to make things tricky for, you know, Cloud9 to get a good initiation. Run, so. The longer they leave this Morphling to farm that up, it's going to get trickier later on. So for now, though, Mu, focusing on getting this level 6, he should get at the conclusion of this wave, and being able to gank this Panda is going to get even more tough, as now he has a hold of that Primal Split. So good grab right there. Mu doesn't feed over any kills early on, and... Gets the benefit of that extra life. Radiance top tower is under yeah, both attack. Both offlaners are sitting Radiant pretty similar. Bones luckily fortified. getting a nice triple stack killed up right here, so he's going to pull a little ahead of the centaur. But centaur's getting good XP from the lane. He's got his tranquil boots finished up, and newbie now pounding it into the top tower, trying to get some uh, some nice damage on the end. Yep. Yeah, just trying to force some reaction up there. It's banana pulling the wave, well in the way and all the way around Radiant's the corner to allow them to attack. open up really on this tower. They're going to take it down. It's not a third life already. They might be able to take this easily. And now he's nearby. I don't know if he's going to consider moving in there. He's not. So this is going to be a first tower takedown at about six minutes in here. Advantage for Newbie again, getting the first Radiant's blood and now the first tower. tower. It's fallen. a very nice start for him. But we've seen yeah, time and, and time again for uh, Cloud9, though. EE e can definitely pull the game back on his clinks. Yeah, and it's nice to point out that they're able to, on oh, Moo actually might. Oh, yeah, they're gonna shot one of them with the ulti. He goes for it. And uh oh, Bone7 Bone in, in trouble. The bears are split. And they move on and get a sweet kill there. Now Fada linking up on one of them, and it will be enough to zone him back. But another sweet takedown there for Newbie on the back of that brew. Conveniently catches out, knows that there's a lot of tension on these rune spots that we've already seen three times before. But on this time, the six minute mark, they do come out on top with a kill. So very nice grab there for Newbie. And they actually didn't even end up using the glyph for that top tower. So another wasted glyph. People not really getting the hang of that just yet. Glyph it or ticket, as I hear. You gotta, you gotta make sure you get it yeah. done. And you gotta get in that and habit. Nine, something to point out with their lineup that I was trying to say before is that they don't really have any outspam if uh, Newbie does push towers like that. Their only outspam is really like plasma field. Plasma field, a wave. And like, like Firefly later on. I mean. Oh, no. I'm it's the, I'm okay for banana. clear, but that's it. Yeah, yeah what Silencer what doesn't really contribute. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm drunk, apparently. Uh, <laughs> Silencer, uh, <laughs> Silencer doesn't really contribute a whole lot as far as wave clearing. And yeah, Bat Rider with Flight's probably their best bet right now. Is Owie's also more singer, single target. You know, he's more of like, I want to be able to get up my level 6, get my reincarnate, try to get a good initiation in, and just try to be in the, be in the heart of the fight so that when my ult does go off, EE will be able to capitalize on their big, big slow and bring him down yeah, as much as possible. Moo's going to be getting a pretty early blink dagger now out of all this. It's going to be kind of tough to gank him because Bone's going to have a pretty late blink coming out, in my opinion, after dying like that as well. Mm -hmm. So they're going to get a bunch of their really needed things all at the same time. So this Venge is going to get an urn, basically. Morphling's going to do just Morphling things. I don't think he'll really come to the fight too much. But Panda's going to get his blink and Centaur's going to get six. So they'll probably just want to go for a tower, just ball up and go for it. Because Pylai Dai is now giving this bottom lane alone. 
to farm, and they're gonna gank him, because they know this. They know this is something that C9 does all the time. They leave their supports solo in these lanes to get the levels and farm that they need. All right, Pylai die. I hope I don't die as he gets so, yeah, he's dead. They're running on forward, Stampede, and say your final prayers, buddy, as he gets slashed, and, well, swift takedown is it's HG Apparition there. San Shang picks up the kill and moves on forward. That much closer to level six, Ooh, that would definitely better. Moudini. He did it again, dude. Wait, what? Moudidi? Moudini. Moudini. <laughs> oh, yeah. Very nice. I like that. I'm going to steal that. That was yours yesterday, man. Well, I said Houdini. I didn't say Moudini. You got, you got that. I thought you said Moudini. I was like, wow. I should have so just, just said I said that now. Oh, well. They get a grab here. Meanwhile, San Shang, uh, well, Iceman falls right there and quickly gets burned about and melted as uh, finally Cloud9 managed to get themselves onto the board there at uh, a little over eight minutes. This allows a prompt rotation to come back in. It's how on that Morphling is he. We'll look to farm a little bit here in the mid lane, and well, he's doing Radiant's fantastically thus far. He's leveled up his wand. He's got his void stone ready to go. The early makings of that Lincoln Sphere, you can see, also going to be picked up. Is your power treads there on your EE e. clanks as he's looking to scout things out on the skeleton walk, going right on through. Want to get that sweet intel right now? Maybe get a quick what death pact right there. Yep. See you later, bird. Thank you very much for your damage. As he promptly takes him down, we'll just take a little bit of farm on the enemy side. Yeah, it's nice that Bones had. <laughs> an incredible amount of stacks to try to catch up, but he's still not really catching up too well because of that death bottom. It really set him back a lot because he did opt to go for this uh, this more farming type build. He went for the tranquils and even the bottle on top of that. Mm -hmm. Oh, bottom lane, they're making it go. It's Pile I Die. This is a bit of deja vu as he gets slashed about My and he's down once again. Not a tactical feed this time, but they almost actually saved their ancient apparition there with that stampede. Uh, Envy was going on him in top lane at the oh. same exact time. Oh, convenient, but they do end up trading one for one, a support for a support, as uh, I would wager that EE getting that kill does make things a little bit nicer there for Cloud9. So they grab it up. He's got 630 gold. So, you know, I'm a bit rusty here, Fogged, as far as uh, my EE clinks build. Oh, is he, uh, is I think that kill actually benefits Newbie more. They did have the urn. Newbie Banana's now got that urn charge. That's pretty big, in my opinion. Right. Urn did receive quite, quite a nice buff. More pure damage prevents those blinks. It's a very nice ability right now, or item rather, so. All right, you wager newbie's getting the better of this one, but uh, he's still weighing about. He wants, he would love to get another kill right here, but not Who's got a haste target. and a blink dagger. He's going to go bottom lane and pick up his blink. There's oh. a global coming out. Yeah, it's top, top lane. lane. Yeah, it's how. Oh, my goodness. Can he get it? The lingering auto attack dodged by the waveform as he moves on through, and he promptly heals up. Ooh, valiant effort from Cloud9. So they try to synergize that silence ultimate with EE, but it doesn't. Uh-oh, I die. Out. And Why, die? Is he dying somewhere? No. Oh no! Aaron Bradshaw on the deck, I guess, but one more smack on the backside and boom! It's a crit! Move! It's another sweet kill! 500 gold now. He's, he's already had that benefit of that blink, putting it to work right there, and that haste, and he's running on through. He's, he's gonna see Bone 7 here. Uh oh. How you doing? Slams down the clap! Can he take him down? Oh nope, not gonna get able to burst down the Bone 7, but that's a lot more time for Bone 7 to not be getting his own blink dagger. He's at 1600 right now, but. It's taking a lot longer than you'd like on your bat rider here. Yeah, definitely. And they're gonna now converge and put pressure onto this bottom tower. And I don't think C9 will be able to really re react. They don't really have much. I haven't really seen anything out of AUI this game after that mid lane. Yeah, it's rough. He's not really able to do anything. They're not really going for like a dual type roam with the silencer Wraith King at all. They're just kind of trying to farm him up. And it's not really going to their advantage at all right now. They're both starting to fall behind quite heavily. Well, they it looks like Cloud9, they're aware. It's San Shang just who Radiant's is farming that mid lane, trying to get to his level 6, which he successfully does. And the second he gets it, he pulls out, which is the best choice because EE was swooping on in. They knew that they were going to try to leave him there to get all the farm he could. But he gets what he wants, and he pieces out, and Cloud9 wastes their time trying to get a pick off on him. Meanwhile, Radiant's bottom lane, bottom they're just knocking on that tier 1 tower here, and Dyer's now they don't have the fortification to... Pull it out here. I'm really concerned this game for C9 already. This ba this, this centaur has a blink Radiant's dagger as well. Plus 600 gold. Tranquil boots, everything he's got already. And he's got levels. He's level 8. So even though Fado's got this Treads Ogre Axe, if they just jump on him, he's, he's pretty dead. Anybody that they get on is going to die extremely quickly. Yeah, initiation is definitely of abundance here Dyer's on the side of Newbie. The blink on attack. centaur, the blink on panda. Swap's going to be coming up momentarily. And you follow that up with a sweet ice blast and Morphling oh, bottom lane. There. There's your initiation also happening. It's it's Pi. Can Pi TP out of this one in time? And he can. 
Nah, fool me once, and twice, and three times, shame on you, but the fourth time I'll be able to TP out of that one, says bye. <laughs> Moo thinks about using the ulti there, but then I, th he's, I think they're starting to learn. They're like, let's not ult pile I die. Yeah, they're like, well, my... <laughs> let's not multi ult. Let's not multiple ult while I die. Yeah, they're like, he's quite the sponge for Cloud9, and we don't want to soak that sponge with overcommitments of our ultimate, as we won't have that on the follow up. And now they wait it out, they'll just they'll let him go. And yeah, they get it. Uh oh, uh -oh. Seven. Bone seven. Oh no! I, I was like looking down, I didn't quite see him, but he was trying to still farm up that blink dagger. And, well, he got the blink dagger. Yeah, he, he got it right at the end right there, but that allows Newbie to get the kill on him and take the tier 1 tower. That's three tier 1s already down at 13 minutes in. Fog, I'm getting concerned too. Alright, man, I don't know. The Razor is going to be able to do a decent amount with... Dyer's top tower it, he's just got to rush a BKB now at this point. So it just makes him a little bit weaker, but... Yeah, it's going to be odd. It's going to be odd indeed. Is, uh, what are, what's going to be the best target as far as static link? They don't have a whole Dyer's lot of lockdown to follow it on up and attack. really get the most optimal damage in these fights. So, And, uh, oh, mid lane. There's a ping there, but they have a sentry here on San Shang. They're not looking to drop it just yet. And, uh, he I really like. What, back. I really, really do like what Newbie's doing right now, though. They got into the enemy's face right away, and that's. I like this centaur pander just for that for Newbie, because they're able to. They got a couple towers in, and then now they got some very deep aggressive wards down. So this one ward down near that radiant big camp is what spotted up on seven initially, and then they've got. They put a ward. I had another ward in their jungle as well. So they just really want to keep the aggression and have map control and map dominance over C9 because they know. C9 likes to split up and farm as much as possible. They're waiting a long time to see if they can get a pick off here on Hao, but there's already reinforcements in the lane and on the way here. Howie, oh, he misses out on the stun. EE e is trying to focus the tower, but that's not the best bet. And here comes the rest of Newbie. This is going to get ugly real quick for Cloud9. Howie trying to get away. He does not have level 6, so if he goes down, he is done for here. Cyclone he has, he up in the air. Oh, he oh, he's trying to save it for the reincarnation time. Oh, you got to factor that, uh, that PPD, I'd say, logic, where you just reserve it. And if you don't have to use it, that's great. But if you do, you have the point to pop in there. You know what I'm talking about? And then you can come back. But I think he would have been taken down regardless in that kind of a case. But still, Newbie end up coming on top. They uh, have reinforcements nearby. They sweep on in and really counter-initiate nicely right there. Two fall on the side of Cloud9. And as you can see... And that's the beauty of their uh, the aggression that they caused and the wards that they got down. They know that no one's farming in the jungle for C9. So they were like, all right, let's bait how top and we're going to go for them. And C9 went, and that was it. And they just knew exactly what was going to happen. So Cloud9 pulling out a draft that's oh, pie. somewhat again. Uh, why do I even bother looking away from this man? As he ends up falling once again there. Well, I don't know what he was doing well past the river right there, but here we go. Let's see if Bone7 get the return. But as he jumps in, he gets clapped. And, well, they do take down the Vengeful Spirit, but they might pay for it here. And, oh, my God, brilliant takedown there. Pop the dust. They see EE, and they burst him down. Make him pay there. It ends up being a two for one, a prominent trade for Newbie here. And they are well in the head on this one, pushing towards the 5k net worth advantage. XP about the same, and it's looking very nice. They had a very successful early laning phase. We're getting ready to approach the mid game mark, and they are making everything work out to their benefit here. As now they move themselves into the Roche pit, and they're going to look to promptly take it down. The damage isn't the best for them, but. I think they're feeling plenty confident that attack. even if Cloud9 wanted to contest, Dyer's they would be able to hold their own. So this is going to be a Swift Roach takedown. Cloud9 will be able to make a trade. Top lane, the tier 1's awfully low as it is. Actually, look at this, Newbie. Rotation's in from VS. They don't want to hand anything over too easy. They're like bluffing. Banana's going to die, though. Yep. They're like, aha, no one else is with you, fool. And they're going to jump in. Magic Missile, though. Bone 7 eating a lot of damage from that tower. Makes him second Dyer's guess on committing right there. And look at that. Banana's safe. Even with the Stampede Sean helping him out, fallen. it's all Dyer's good. So at the fallen. same time, Roche will end up falling down. How's going to be the one to pick up the Aegis. And, uh, I almost type in the Glyph Timer every time. It's actually a problem now. All right, not the Glyph Timer, the Roche Timer. It's okay, man. You can practice your habits if you want. I just don't know how the players will feel about Courier it. And courier kill! Dyer's oh, it delivers the Lincolns right before it dies. Killed. Oh, I swiftly missed it right there, but EE yeah. e. lurking nice in money, the though. skeleton walk does get the uh, takedown. No cargo on it because it already did drop it off, but that's your Lincolns grab on how. So Aegis and Lincolns in the pocket of Morphling. And, uh, yeah. man, things are rough. I mean, what really, what can you do at this point? The five-man team fight that C9 have is not going to be able to hold a candle to newbie at this point in the game. Yeah, take, take a look a at Envy's items. I, I was right. Desolator, he's going to take advantage of that. 6.82 style of Clinks being able to stack the Searing and the Desolator. He's just hoping that maybe, oh, they see him. There's the Sentry in the woods. But they're not going to commit on that. They're looking to go on mid lane instead. But, yeah, 
Maybe if he gets prime position and newbie doesn't happen to really notice him there, he can deal out some significant damage or maybe even on the target of uh, Bone7's lasso. They can get a quick first down. But newbie have been working together rather nicely. And anytime oh, Fadam makes a jump out here in mid, oh. and here's the big jump, and he's it's the first in. Yeah, this is the thing. This is what's just going to happen. Like, even though he has this BKB, he's so squishy, and he got forced to rush this BKB. Yep. And I wouldn't be too surprised if I see next Banana's next pickup be a gem. Top tower is under attack. And them just trying to just take out all the wards yeah. and just and constantly fine. know whenever the Clinks is running around. Yeah, hunt Envy. Pull out the Bloodhounds with that, and he's not going to feel safe anywhere at that point. And then they're going to be crippled, shepherd back into their base, I like to say, and not being able to find much farm anywhere else. For now, it's EE taking all the farm in the jungle, but that leaves no defenses Radiant's here. Top it's top lane. It's newbie Radiant's to clear out the tier tower 2 tower. Very easy. They want every grabbing. building. Yeah, they, want full, they want the whole map controlled. They're take, they're putting wards down as soon as they take the towers out and just just not letting C9 really farm yeah. at all. Cor corralling yeah, him back into these lines. He no skills words. the reincarnation this time. So a second life. Ice Blast is going to come a little too late. They're looking to return fire here on Rabbit. Rabbit might be taken down here. Stack Link. Nice duration here. Bringing in the damage. BKBs moves on forward, but Owie's left behind here with the Brewmaster. The bare necessities as they move on back and should be able to swiftly take him down, but they actually do manage to strike to take down the Centaur Fata. Under the gun here from Hal. We'll keep eyes right here. He does manage to burn him down. Two for two trade in the end, but it's Hal. Pulls it together for his team. Gets a killing spree. Bone 7 looking to fly up and above right now, but they have the OB, so they see him lingering about. And, oh, jump forward here. Trying to catch him out, but Drunken Haze isn't going to do a whole lot except make him a little woozy. But here we go. Uh oh, oh they see him. 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 Oh, he's right over a sentry here. Oh, he's, oh, he's flirting with danger. Swap back right now. Global silence, but that doesn't Play matter. Global. Oh, man. Not good enough. Bone 7 also to fall and a double Every kill. Every spell move. was casted before the global even went off. He swapped, stunned. I don't know if he adapted strike or anything, but the swap and the stun was what mattered. And it was already done for, so... Cloud Knight reaching at this point for anything they can to come back in this one, but it's all newbie all day right now as they push on the mid lane and should be able to come a knocking at the tier Radiant's 2 door and how's leading attack. out the charge. 3.1k yeah, on a morphine. Got, wow. The Centaur just feels, I feel like he just got too much. He got a blink tagger before the bat rider even did and he, I don't even think he really had to go to the jungle at all. That gank mid was so beneficial for newbie early on in the game. Convenient double ancient stack. All for us as newbie do clear it all out as things were hard enough as it is. Now uh, Morphling, if he wants to move on to that shotgun kind of a build and get the hold of the Ghost Scepter into Ethblade, it's it's going to be coming rather quickly here. And I don't know, man. It's looking rough for Cloud9. Yeah, Gem picked up now, too. And Banana was the one who bought it. And it, they gave it up to Rabbit, and they're just taking out all the wards that C9 just placed. Nice, new, fresh wards. How shuffles back. Briefly gets a glimpse of EE there, shuffling up to the top lane, and... He's getting close to his Desolator, but uh, yeah, Desolator That's clinks, 730 life. Ugh, that's not going to be enough. Bit of a glass cannon kind of a build right here, and they're moving on back. Uh-oh. He, he's going to be careful. Rabbit does have this gem, and he is in the neighborhood. They're going to cross paths. This is going to be ugly real quick. Oh, oh, he sees him. Blink forward, doesn't get the stun. Actually holds it back very nicely here, and they're moving on forward. Dust is going to pop as well. Swap back right into the fray. Cold feet, stun, ice blast. Ooh. That's it. It's over. He's done. Down for the count. 40 seconds here. And newbie, if they like, can try to move together and make more push pressure happen here. And, oh, caught the back end of that one. Pile I die. And slammed in the face right there and taken down as it's now 5 to 18. Not going the same way as the first game as Cloud9. And full control, but newbie in game number two here looking very nice. They get out the few respect bands. They take out the Visage. They take out the Terrible once more. And Cloud9 fall back on an old tried and true strat of the clinks and it's not really working out to their falling. benefit even the silencer you know questioning really what he's bringing to the table at this point you know they didn't really have much to offer early in the laning phase Dyer's top tower DE's is not really attack. finding the farm that he'd like and it's all control right now for newbie there's your ee uh, desolator though now yeah that's blade finished up by how he's on 13k net worth he's Pretty beefy. We got Ag Scepter finished up for Moo, so he did opt to go for that rather than this Vlad's build that we've been seeing a lot of people do. Sun Sheng's getting close to his Ags, and yeah. Banana's just racking up, or Newbie's just been racking up a ton of different items. While C9 are slowly picking up some, but to no avail. It's not really going to be able to do much. I'm surprised that Newbie are not further. Oh, God. EE -E just ugh, runs right across and into Centaur, and of course they have Prime Vision, and he had just gotten back from the dead. And 
just committed that Desolator, and he falls once more. This is potentially the makings of an, an early GG. I mean, I don't want to call too soon here, but it, as long as Newbie just kind of holds control and don't throw this one out of the books too quickly, they should be able to get everything they want. I mean, I don't even know of a time that Bone 7 was able to primarily initiate with his Bat Rider and try to get something going. It seems like they've been on the defensive or they've just been flat out caught out from Newbie. And they just, it seems like they were basing this so much on the clinks because even okay razor does great middle versus the panda and everything but then where's your actual follow-up damage when your bat rider lassos uh oh I mean, moving on sure through haste now he's gonna be here he's got a, a reincarnation oh uh, blink and slam stops that tp and this could be two back-to-back -back takedowns his, his he just regen his mana up to his reincarnate mana uh, well uh, really what good is that gonna do if you just come back for another Another kill. He knows it too. Oh, he falls sucked. and he was uh, on agi treads too. Like he was on in treads originally, then he switched to agi treads to have to try to have less mana. And he was about five short, and he just ticked up to the reincarnate mana right before they killed him. But really though, what? It's going to delay them a bit, I suppose, and allow space for Cloud Nine to try to push and find farm elsewhere. It's really that's really what's coming all from it. Twenty to five though. It's it's a devastatingly good lead right now for newbie as they. Are aware EE is Radiant's not in their jungle, so maybe he's in our jungle. Attack. So they're going to go for the sweeps right here and see if they can catch anyone out. They ping out. They're moving on through here. Ooh, got to be careful. They ulted him without even any vision. They just were like, this guy's in our woods somewhere. It, we'll get him. They have a GPS Radiant's locked on to EE, and they know exactly his patterns as far as where he's looking for the farm. And Bone 7 moves up hard to the north right here. Maybe they're hoping they can get a quick grab here on Banana, who is relatively close. and. I was going to say help is not too close for him, but there's your Morphling TP in. So now if they wanted to make a go here on Banana, this would not be the best choice. What are they doing? They're backing in their base right now. Banana's like, yo, there's, there's something going Something's on fishy in this here. Something <laughs> is, something's up. I'm going to scout this out. Oh, my God. Oh, they know, buddy. Well, Bone 7 does four staff to the other side Can't of the blink. mountain. Can he Earn. No swap, no courier. Big, big swap. No, he's trying to scout it out with the little courier, but it's not going to be so lucky. And they're really making him run all over the place. This is diverting their attention from pushing, I suppose, but I don't know. It's not like EE is really finding significant farm elsewhere. He's only got 640 gold since picking up that Desolator after falling back-to-back -back times. He's sporting 2-4 and four record right now. Not really the ideal situation, but he's going to run to Sanchang here. This could be a... Yeah, that, was a that was a kill on a silver platter if I ever saw one there for EE, so a small benefit for him. But I Damage don't know. from that later searing arrows. That was like three shots, right? Yeah. Done. Yeah. Moo's here also, but Moo is taking not a look at it easy. on the instant replay. Let's see, one, two, three, oh, four. Okay. Oh wow, you got the stream up, and you're gonna <laughs> double check. Yep. Yeah. Quick takedown right there for EE. E. A, a small hope for Cloud Nine, but what is a very, very, very good small. newbie game? Yeah, very small. I mean, they're they're already playing, waiting out for the safe bet, which is for this Roshan to pop back up. They can benefit from that extra life and maybe go for a good final swift push, try to put a lid on this game. They're feeling well in the head. They want to stay good and warm, so if they do decide to go into a game number three, they'll be fresh and ready. Don't want to be lingering too much stamina on this one as they can try to end it as soon as possible. But Cloud9 The thing is that all of the, oh, AY getting slain. Oh, wow. In the back end there, that uh, Ice Blast. Just kind of sealing the deal there, obviously, with no reincarnate as he doesn't even have the level 2 yet. Still level 10. It's going to take a long time. And yeah, uh, it's well, not 7 to 12. Oh, we got another kill. We got him again. Yeah, this ancient apparition getting yeah, caught man. out on his own, and he, he's just benefiting from all that. So This is how all of, I think, I think all of C9's games yesterday looked, though. 7 to 21. But I think this one's a little bit more out of hand than, you know. It's not really your terrible. They don't really blade, have a, they don't have a Nagar Terra Blade. Yeah, so as long as they hold this gem and continue to do their sweeps, uh, like this one. Oh. I don't see him. Banana does not have the gem. Banana's kind of tanky, though. I don't know if you really want to mess with Banana. No. His best target's that AA, which he's now found twice, but outside of that, it's not looking too good. And Rabbit's already going to take preemptive measures for EE, even if he gets farmed up. He's got a Mystic Staff on his Centaur. He wants to get a Shiva's Armor. Look at this. Oh, what? They're calling the Stampede. They're seeing if they can scout out Fata, who does get the TP off. They're kind of just... Jumping all over the place, seeing if they can catch anyone out. But and Roche is back. Roche is back. How's already in the pit, going to town. And that's the he other really thing, though, is this How's continuously he farming up in the meantime. He's got his F blade, and now he'll benefit from this. And, and a manta on top of that. Bought a full manta. He's he's farmed out. Fine. 
Look at that Vanjora. That's the thing. Like with uh, Vanjora usually doesn't add so much damage because it's based off of your base. It's off your base damage. Mm -hmm. But Morphling is all base damage, mm -hmm. so he gets plus 100 damage just from that Vanjora when he's near. Yeah. When he's it's near. When he's near, of course. It's quite insane, though. Yeah, and I would imagine now with the uh, Aegis on hand, they can all get quite near to each other and maybe consider going for a swift push. Cloud9 are going to add pressure elsewhere, as you can see. They're all up in this top lane, seeing if they can kind of take down a Tier 2, find time elsewhere, divert attention as much as possible, but at some point they might need to consider doubling back and trying to pull out a defense as it looks like they are going to start breaking the high ground right here. There's a replicate on the brew. Moving forward, maybe they can help debate something out with it, but they're going to wait on the fortification. And, everything. And he's like, fine, that's fine, I'll wait. Agnum's picked up on Razor, so he's going all in. He doesn't want to buy back in case this gets ugly. And the Tier 3 is going to fall right now. A little bit extra damage there on Howe, and pressure now on this Tier 2. He's got company waiting behind. Banana's there with the swap ready to go in case things do get ugly. But they're actually moving on in. There's your first life going to take down on Hal. Primal Split going to move on forward, trying to zone back the rest of the team as the racks will fall, just like that. Bottom cleared out right now. Moving on through. Mega Kill picked up from Hal. Another takedown right there. It's going to be E. Yeah, this is, they are way too farmed at this point. There's really nothing C9 can do to admirably try to defend out their base. So they'll take down as many as possible. Maybe consider committing for a secondary lane. Pi Dai Dai, he goes in and Rampage right there. Popped out from Howe, who's been a titan this game. And that's a swift second game right there. Right before the 30 minute mark, it's, it's Newbie who take back and reset it here. As we now go one and one, we're gonna have a game number three fogged as We'll see which team is going to move on from the semis and that much closer to all that sweet, sweet cash. Yeah, it looks like Newbie just had a really good mindset of this game, good idea. They got the Panda, which Moo has a great win rate on, but overall, I mean, Rabbit just had an incredible game in that offlane. He got a really early blink dagger before Bone 7 did, and they were just able to do so much. And Pilot Die is actually worth negative fantasy points that game. Yeah. I didn't know that was possible. Well, if you had fantasy banking on him, I'm sorry. Condolences to you, but hopefully Cloud9 will be able to pull it back for their team. And for Newbie, they're looking to seal out the series and move on forward. we got one more game, folks. This is brought to you, of course, by us over on Beyond the Summit. I am Coddle Guy. Catch me on Twitter at Coddle Guy. The handsome man joining me is Fog. You can catch him over at Fog Dota. And we will be right back for a game number three.